Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to talk about Open Historical Map. Um, and I would like to thank OSMUS for taking us under their wing and letting us use a variety of their resources, including this conference. And uh, this is a highly abridged version of what we'll be talking about tomorrow at our Birds of a Feather, which is at the uh, <clears throat> 7.30 a.m. Pacific time, Maggie. Um, so here we go. Um, the state of the map since Minneapolis, when we talked last year, we presented a prototype uh, with a timeline, a time slider. And uh, since then, uh, we've had a variety of disasters on our back end, but we've also had a variety of successes and we've managed to bring up an entirely new stack. And we have active ongoing development and an invigorated community. Um, we still have a lot of opportunities moving forward and uh, particularly in the area of community and better docs and better styling, even though you see some unusual styling there and some more imports. But the bottom line is that uh, we have kind of kicked things off. And one of the key areas of emphasis for us in this past year was to increase our community engagement. And uh, we have active discussions ongoing, I'm glad to say, in uh, the OSM US Slack uh, and in Discord, and our community has gone up and up and up. And as you can see, uh, the change set uh, improvements, this isn't quite as fancy as Jennings slide, but um, we'll get there. And you can see there's a, an increasing amount of involvement and people are reaching out and letting us know what they think, which is kind of exciting. Uh, let me see here. Uh, and we're seeing all kinds of projects. Uh, Richard Welty's here. This is some of his handiwork in most of these cases. We have a, you know, very small scale projects that people are taking on to, um, you know, to implement some of their cool ideas in historical mapping. And also we have urban scale and you can see some of our uh, more impressive projects here. A lot of these are individual efforts uh, that you're seeing heavy lifting by single people and uh, we'll talk a bit more about that in a second. Um, in fact, I am leaving out Nathaniel here. He was on the call, uh, one of our more prolific mappers. But we also have, you know, admin zero types of things. So you're seeing like boundaries of African, African countries over time or small provinces or even states in the United States. So a lot of these are new um, and, uh, you know, mapping efforts people have undertaken. Uh, since we've really improved things uh, on the tech side. Uh, we are about to launch our version of the tasking manager, uh, which we're very excited about. Uh, thank you to HOT for that, the Humanitarian OpenStreetMap team. Um, that's a fantastic tool. And one of the key elements that we're most excited about this for is for moving from these individual efforts into collaborative mapping efforts so that more people can come in and work on the same thing at the same time in a coordinated fashion. It's also gonna be a great tool for us to interact with Teach OSM uh, even more and extend, uh, shout out to Greg Hill, educator on the call today, uh, to interact with classrooms and use this as a teaching tool both for history and for mapping, you know, it's a bit of a cue ball earth out there. And so there's plenty of greenfield opportunities for mapping. Um, and in terms 30 of- 30 more seconds, just to give what? you that warning. How many more? 30 more seconds. 30, oh, I turned <laughs> too late. Okay, very good. Lots of cool uh, new features coming, inspector uh, improvements in the ELI. And uh, as you can see, uh, we need to improve editing because when you have a lot of things changing over time, it can be hard. And uh, on that front, uh, you know, we're going to continue to develop our features and grow our community and continue to learn from what uh, you can only do by learning, learning by doing. Thank you very much. Thanks for the heads up.